Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Emmy. Woo! Welcome back. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. It's been a while since we've done an episode, I think. Um, we're still socially distanced. The only way we can do it, Ross is on the East Coast. I'm in the Midwest. Emmy's all the way on the West Coast. We're back to full U.S. time zones. Sorry, Mountain. Um, mm-hmm. I spent a ton of time in Arizona, which was Pacific, and then drove north to the Mountain time zone into Utah, and that messed with me. Yes, that kills me. Because whenever I go to Arizona, I'm like, did we change time or not? Because I'm very, very confused. Right. And so, yeah, I see your pain. I see you and I feel you. Well, like for them, it's like the clocks don't change. We don't know. Like the yeah. state just jumps time zones when it feels like it. Yeah, I wish that we did that because I'm like, we're not farmers anymore. Just keep us Dude. on the same time schedule. Oh. Just the well, same. Do I I'm literally in the actual s- watches? Like, do you have to change time on your watches or is it just look at your phone and like, oh, suddenly we've got an hour forward and backwards. No, no, no like matter. I have clocks and things. Like we, we're fancy. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's like, I don't have clocks. No clocks. <laughs> I have an clock. Well, <laughs> now, clock. now we're beginning the ag report. So we'll just start going through that and that'll be our new spinoff podcast. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Speaking of things not um, going well, <laughs> we're going to launch into a little bit of news, which we haven't done in a long time, which I think we've yeah. actually discuss this like you and i i don't know if you and i've discussed this i've definitely discussed this with people at work um Mm -hmm. it was a thing on the broncom forums for a long time but now it's official because the national highway transportation and safety administration is looking at bronco engine failures yes Yes. so we've discussed a couple different bronco issues on the show and i think everybody in the off-road community has discussed bronco issues on the side um the first of them was tie rods which uh like to you know snap and the new one is engine failures so yeah as chris said only, the NHTSA, only, on the, only on the v6 right the little yes. cool. only on the v6 okay. which um, to me and, was the more i don't know not not confusing but like the engine i didn't expect to have the yeah. issue because the you 27s, were expecting the 27 to be severely overtaxed and thus have issues because of that right <laughs> I wasn't because it's in the F-150 too. Like it's. Have they actually like blown up there or don't the, don't people just get like a check engine light and then they take it to the dealer and then the dealer's like, Oh, catastrophic failure. But it's not like this thing is blowing up like while they're driving. Right. And this is where we start to get into the forum post then. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, forum posts. Not actually reported information. Forum posts and actual complaints at dealers and written service reports are two totally different things right and it's difficult to decipher actuality from you know what joe schmo could just type on the bronco forums um and that joe schmo guy types a lot fucking joe schmo (laughs) (laughs) the other thing is that i've seen engines torn down modern engines torn down in an engine bay and at some point it is probably easier to just pull the engine and replace it so I am kind of wondering if they're, they're going, yes, catastrophic engine failure so that the owner of this brand new Bronco Uh-oh. that they paid 70 grand for just gets a new engine instead of having their vehicle, you know, an engine swap can be done in three days, a full teardown if somebody has to come in and look at it and inspect it and go through the whole diag process, that could be weeks that the vehicle's down. So I'm kind of wondering if they're just like telling the customers that there was a catastrophic engine failure and they got something on a crate, you know, on a, in a pallet and they just do the swap and send them on their merry way. And this is kind of exacerbating the whole thing. Or if it's actually like they have these things torn apart and they're just yeah, sitting yeah. You know, in the Ford like service lot while they can't do things. because So anyways, that's the gist of it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's pretty sneaky. But I mean, if I were the customer, I'd be like, yeah, swap the engine out. Sure. Yeah. I want a new crate engine. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, I know these were all like super low mileage failures. I mean, like under like 5,000 miles. So, um, I mean, I guess there's not that much of an advantage to getting a new engine unless, of course, you have catastrophic failure. Catastrophic with a P. That's also terrible. Yeah. (laughs) Also not good. <laughs> so yeah, but that's um, the news. I'm, I'm just yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. I I really I like I've driven them both, and I always thought that the two three would be the engine 
Like I, I never, I know a lot of Bronco owners love the two, three to me. It, it wasn't the engine I would have chosen. I would have chosen the two, seven. Like it felt way more robust and powerful and strong. And the two, three always felt a little strain to me. Um, but if it's an issue in the engine, then celebrate your two threes. Like, here we go. Well, speaking of two threes, which not at all, um, I'm supposed to go drive the Bronco Raptor on um, Thursday and Friday. Ooh. So maybe those people should just be like, yeah, pull the engine and throw a V8 in there. <laughs> oh, so, for free. For free, yeah. <laughs> for my time. Yeah, right. Or, or Can you imagine like the $350 upgrade. Like I want the smallest amount that I could, like it's <laughs> oh, the $100 water God. warranty coverage. Like, Can you imagine? So we know there's a, a, an F-150 Raptor R coming with the yep. GT500 supercharged right. V8. Right, right. Can you imagine that in a two-door Bronco? That'd be you'd, be able, you'd, just, you'd be able to pull in four-wheel drive. You'd pull a tire off the ground. It'd be, It'd be like your Defender V8 that you played with. Yeah, minus 1,000 pounds and plus 200 <laughs> horsepower. <laughs> yeah, it would 100. I mean, if it were in a regular Bronco, that would 100% overwhelm the, the travel. Like, you wouldn't be able to use all of that power, at least not on the dirt, but... I mean, I'm excited to drive the new V8. We're going to go, um, it's in Palms. We start in Palm Springs. It's going to be a hundred thousand million degrees. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come up here close to me in Yucca Valley and go out to Johnson Valley. And, um, from what I'm seeing on Instagram of people that are doing it now, they're doing some hammer trails. I don't know which ones they're Ooh. doing, but I know they're up there in some hammer yes. trails. So. Friend of show, Johnny Lieberman posted. Yes. John, Do Johnny Lieberman. Yep. Was, Man. Um, they, he's, got, he's got the, uh, the Bronco Raptor on the Braptor as he's been calling it. Yeah. The Braptor. And it yeah. looks like they took off the side steps from all of them. And it looks like they took off the little like wing bumper S on all of them. And I, you call them bumper S because it's the same thing that like the YJ Wrangler had. It's just these tiny little things on the corners that you just, yeah. Whoop, yeah. And they come off. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's well, every but, TJ yeah. too? Did they every Wrangler TJ had those plastic things on the end of it? Yes. Pops off. And like, some JK Rubicons where you could just basically pull off everything that obstructs the tires. By yeah. the way, and, we're and I'm only ref approach angle. I'm only <laughs> referring to it as the Braptor from now on. That's like yep. I, I did spend way too much time with someone who's half my age <laughs> and he's in a motocross. And so like Brap was in our vocabulary oh, quite a bit. Yep. And so like <clears throat> Brap was Brap definitely, yeah. Skirt. I mean, it, it definitely. Okay, the rest out. of that statement's not mine. The first part <laughs> of that statement's mine. Have you seen that SNL skit? Yes, I have. Because yeah, okay, I kept good. telling okay, every yeah. song we were listening to, I was like, dude, <laughs> this is the SNL sketch again. And he was like, yeah, it is. Oh, Sorry. man. It's, it's <laughs> one of the best sketches they've done in like 20 years. So it's not every day um, you find someone who's half your age who shares 100% your primary music taste. So he was super into like 2000s alternative stuff. And I was like, homie, do you care if I sing along? Cause this is like, <laughs> I was in, I was your age when I was listening to these. Like, and he was like, yeah, you're good. Like I'm singing so. along whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, no, no, dude. When you spend like weeks at a time with an individual, you're going to ask some permissions. Like, no, that's when you don't ask permission because you've been uh, there weeks at a time with them. Well, this was early on. Like it's still like, by the end of it, I was like, I don't, I'm not asking anything anymore. He knows and I know. Like I saw him at work the other day and somebody saw us pass in the halls. They're like, are you, are you, did you two get enough of each other? We're like, no, no, no. Like when he's not here, I have a longing. Like he's, I need him. Like he's not four feet to my right in a van with me right now. I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, I, I can't just punch him in the face. <laughs> Oh, he and we I don't got along. encourage that as workplace. He and I got along great. That was never um, an issue in our band. So, speaking of Raptor, I would just like to point out the obvious and say that as Jurassic Park Dominion launches, there was a missed opportunity in having the Bronco Raptor in that. As yeah. you know, Jeep obviously has the you know. The contract. And I wonder, like, what the bidding wars were for that. I wonder if that yeah, was sure like, steep. Yeah, I almost wonder if because oh so. Going back, Ford was in the first one. We all know what the Explorer looked like. Right. The electric Explorer that was, you know, on the rails. Um, but the the cageless YJ was the hero of the Jeeps in that one. And I kind of wonder if... Is it a hero or a villain if someone dies in it? In the first one? Nobody oh, died. No, I guess he gets out of it and then he dies. Yeah. yeah dies. Spoiler it. alert. On Must go faster. Must go faster. Yeah. No, no I, don't, I, don't, I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I guess I need to go back and watch all the Jurassic Parks before I go see this new monstrosity. Right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what's our new hero of your The Unimog mm -hmm. was in the second to last one. That was like the hero. Like that's what got them onto the boat. Yeah. They like jumped wasn't the there, Unimog. Wasn't there like a, a 
G wagon convertible in the second one too. Probably or the third one. It might have been the convertible. It might have been the six by six convertible. There that were. In that's the, what. Yeah, that was in the most recent. That was heard. in the most recent one. And Lost World Wars, and it was, and four it was an ML. Squared. It was an or ML. ML. You Mercedes right. ML, oh and they God. like it goes over a cliff fairly early on. Like I've read that book three times, and I've seen that movie point five times. <laughs> so you didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I could. <laughs> Um, we're okay. already off topic let's let's yeah let's let's <laughs> tight hour tonight ross tight hour <laughs> tight hour yeah talk about your new stuff new stuff perfect Just, timing because emmy's Emmy, Emmy definitely going to be on board. absolutely perfect so i bought a 1999 emerald green miata and Yay! It's glorious um i have not driven it since i purchased it well <laughs> two and a half weeks ago i'm sorry i have to go bye yeah oh, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> how do you dude, how do you buy a car a dream car, well, the best car ever and not drive it she's so, going to report you for abuse for first not of all, using it <laughs> first of all it's living an hour and a half away or, oh, okay. an, no an hour without traffic so that's reason number one reason number two is that i've had like a whirlwind of press cars this drive. that's true also, and they've all been pretty good they've been pretty good and i've also been running around trying to get house and life ready for baby so i'm throwing baby excuse under the ring yeah um, use, use it you're just going to use it now for yeah. the next 18 years oh i can't do that <laughs> can. there is a good chance the miata is coming home actually to live at my house on sunday okay so good. that'll be fantastic and, and I, I booked a, a sierra denali ultimate for this weekend oh my lord so yeah costs 80 significant portion no i think they started 90 oh um, my god so yeah, it, I think it, it, the one that I'm supposed to drive is probably going to cost quite a bit of what my house costs. Um, but yeah, the Miata. Are you going to trailer like drive this year out there with the empty trailer and trailer it back, and then you can drive the Miata? I haven't decided. There's a lot of logistics in play. So I have a wedding obligation Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday we're supposed to go quadding, which might entail me stopping on the way back with the trailer and pick up the Miata, drive it home, or something of that uh, will the quad something. fit in the bed of the whatever sierra denali yeah. blah, 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 blah. oh very much so okay will the miata ultimate? fit in the the ultimate. miata will almost fit in the bed if you don't, like, <laughs> yeah. the lifted my lifted one could fit in the bed because i could get over the wheel wells you, right sure. exactly yeah. you yeah. actually have clearance yep yeah. yep <laughs> um and both the quad and the sierra denali ultimate are faster than the miata but that's okay so. <laughs> the miata is always the answer we're fine but, yeah, it's great. Um, I got license plates for it after a reasonably quick experience at the DMV. I got classic plates, which is hysterical. Did you and get them personalized? I didn't get them personalized because the ones that they gave me are actually kind of like unintentionally funny. Isn't there, so, there's like a silly number in it, right? Didn't it have like 69 or something on it? Not, no. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> He texted me who the photo walked, and I forgot. <laughs> who just walked through the background while he said that and was like, what the fuck are you saying? That was, that was my wife and she laughed when I said it. So, <laughs> <laughs> No, I did not get 69 on a plate. Um, okay. No, the, the license plate they gave me is just inherently funny. So it's gonna, I'm going to leave it. I don't think I'm going to do a custom plate. Because, oh, that's right. Now I'm looking at it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to show my license. I mean, I know you can't do anything with license plate. You can't do anything legal with it. Legally, but I mean, you know. So yeah, the Miata. We'll have more to talk about next time. We uh, is it a soft top or a hard top? It is a soft top. Okay, there are have, two... you, have you checked the prices for hard tops? Because hard tops are like a million dollars right now. Um, any hard top for an NA or NB costs currently almost as much as I paid for the Miata. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've been thinking like, well, we could talk about it, but I've been looking at them and they just as they come up on Facebook, and I'm like. $2,500 for a hard top? Like, fuck off. But that's what it's going right. for. It's crazy. I only paid a little more for that than the car. Yeah, I don't I know. The car is yeah. So, um, yeah, hard top. There are, you know, interestingly, I've seen on like the forums and the Facebook pages, and, and it's all freaking vaporware, but some people are talking about like molding their own tops. What? Which, because you can, I, I don't understand it. You can 3D print sections and stitch it together and. Yep. Yeah, That's but real. there's also glass that has to, you know, like happen. get inside it with a rubber seal. If it's the right dimensions, you can just get the right rubber seal, right? Yeah. 
So you 3D printing is a weird world. I love it. But that's a lot. That's way too much math for me. Like, yeah. I, you know, no, I'll buy one. If somebody gets it, but it's too much math. Yeah. Like it's, I'll watch your stop action video as it's being uh -huh, created. Totally. <laughs> mm. Yep. Yep. Great time especially, lapse on YouTube. Especially when so. they get to like 3D printing metals. Like I'm still not on complete know, understanding of it. Yeah. Still, still trying to grasp like the basics yeah <laughs> adam adam yeah, savage had a show where all of a sudden he was 3d printing and titanium and i was like wait what like it, that seems aggressive he wanted to make his own iron man suit i can't even remember what that show was called but it was good i watched it was it called make your own iron man suit uh it might have been like tested with adam savage uh okay well it is. Um, yeah that stuff's pretty i mean like have you seen like those 3d printed wheels or i saw some 3d printed I want to say brake calipers. We're like, it doesn't even really yes. look like a brake caliper. Yeah. Was that but, the zinger, C zinger, or whatever? Yeah, something zinger. Like that. You're something. right. I know. I'm being a modern jackass by like not really knowing the full story. <laughs> um, but, but no. I just, going, what is that that thing? I don't know if I would trust that to actually slow me down. But I think it was uh, previously mentioned. Johnny posted it up uh, for wherever he was. Isn't Singer like from Spain or Croatia or something? Something like that. I don't so, know. Anyways, that's enough about the Miata. We'll talk about it more in the future. No, I'm just so stoked uh, for you that you're now like in the Miata gang. So again, again. Well, again. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> well, back. back. I'm back. Okay, um, uh, yeah. How many miles does this thing have on it? 107. Which no isn't, way. Isn't actually that bad for. No, that's a great for a 99. That's amazing. Yeah, and you know, it's got a couple like things that I gotta sort out, you know. Like um, what? I so as per my internet search last night, which saying that out loud sounds horrible, um, it has an open recall for the fuel filler pipe, which oh. was initially oh. issued in the year two thousand and has not been performed on this car. That, you know, I've never thought like... to check the recalls for either one of my Miatas, and now I feel like I need yeah. to. <laughs> I only did it because when I was looking at the Carfax at first, I was like, oh, that's weird. There's a recall open. It probably doesn't matter. And then last night on a whim, I was like, I wonder what that was. And it's for the fuel filler pipe and the cap, which apparently in some instances don't seal perfectly, which can cause fire. Right. Uh, right what? Right. I'm inclined uh, to say, you know, because it hasn't over the last 22 years it probably is okay uh but it applies so that needs to get sorted out in some way um valve cover gasket probably needs to be done it's weeping from around the sides it's not that bad but it, it's definitely you know yeah but that's easy something. even i did that and yeah. i only broke, and i only broke a few bolts when i realized that there's things called pound feet and pound yes. inch yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that until I did that, and I was like, "What? Yeah. That's great! Yeah, that was great." But I learned something. I will never what, forget it. Yeah. What is it about valve cover bolts, though? Because I've snapped one before doing that too. Like, I don't um, know what it is about those bolts. They're tiny, usually, for how much torque you think you need to put on it. Maybe. Yeah. And they also get a lot of heat. Is speculation, but yeah. So, so yeah, that and, needs to be done. and the OEM ones are fucking expensive. The like ridiculously the expensive. Yeah, the valve cover bolts from OEM were like, I don't know, eight dollars a piece or something. What? Aren't yeah, it like was. It was. I was like, them? okay, no, Rock Auto. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, was I love how Rock Auto gets a shout yeah. out every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> they send monthly coupons, and I right and, and a newsletter to using them monthly <laughs> magnet if you really you know order my favorite them. part of those newsletters um, are the the parts that aren't going to be available anymore like we're just gonna yeah, stop carrying them yeah but then you go to jags or summit and they have five thousand of them yeah you know uh what else other than that like there's a few tears in the top yeah. i just put like huge things of gorilla tape over and it's fine yeah and yeah that's i mean that, those are the you know those are the things to start. And then I'm probably going to put the air, the steering wheel back on that has an airbag, even though I don't know it works. Mm -hmm. And now it's got a Momo prototipo, which is good, but like. It'd be nice to have an airbag. I, I don't have an airbag in Buddy, and I 
need to put five point harnesses on, which necessitates getting mm -hmm. different seats and none of Say what, Have you explored seats for the car yet? Because it is a a universe of, of unknown depths. I mean, yeah, because I, I took one out and then I went to Car Tech, which is like an off-road place or, uh, in town. And then I like took a model, a floor model and I went and I threw it in and I could, I could get them to fit, but it's tight. It's real tight. And, but, and the thing is too, is in Buddy, like I don't have the doors anymore. So that helps out a lot, at least, you know, it, you one side can get squished against the tunnel and then the other side's got a little bit more room. So that, that helps. But honestly, like you just, I just have kind of contacted Spark and been like, I have a 2001 Miata, which seats will fit. And they know. Right. I think it's like the Sparko Sprint is the cheap one that fits. And it's still like 25% of what the car costs. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, but it's safety and, you know, the stock seats suck, so. Let me know what you find, obviously. I will, I will, I will. Um, as a Miata also, owner, I'm sure you know, I would also recommend getting a bigger radiator because Miata radiators suck. Which one do you have? Because I, I need to remove the coolant and replace the radiator and also the tank. In my old, uh, in my older M NB, which was an 01, um, I had a Mishimoto. The Mazda Speed still has the stock one because it, it hasn't let me down yet and I should, I should put something in there, but then Buddy came with a um, Buddy came with a, a bigger one. I don't know what's in there, okay. just a bigger like you know that wide of an aluminum radiator. Yeah, Mishimoto is like if you mention aftermarket radiator, it's just like yes, Mishimoto. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, yeah. If you no, don't yeah. list Mishimoto, we're like, wait, why is your list wrong? <laughs> exactly. Hey, just, not to throw us off at all, but I found the the photo of that. It's an AI designed caliper that's also three D printed. Oh yeah, let's see. A let's... AI design or AI? You press that design. thing to stop you. Give me a break. I would never. <laughs> I'm like, no, that looks like a booger that came out of my nose. I don't uh, get how it works. Especially I mean, in a car that. with 950 horsepower. Like that was in the background of the most recent Alien movie in one of the scenes <laughs> in, the, in the lab. Right. It's crazy, and I have to, like, how much? Okay, let me see. Yeah, how like how much do you get, lose any weight on it? Um, I can't read if if it says anything about the weight. And so, then I right, there's a wheel there's that a goes like, that. Yeah, there's a wheel that goes over that, uh, which they also had designed by AI. I think like yeah. they they basically put in their parameters for like weight and strength, and this is what came out. Like it needed to be this weight, and it needed to be this strong, and this is right. the structure so that it designed. It's like the venom. Uh, Hennessy five or whatever. Yeah, like it's, it's all we put in the parameters the for design. the speed we want. And this is what it looks like. Just so speaking, like that well, whole car is that way. Like, look at a lot yeah. of the stuff under the hood. Like, there's yeah. not a lot of normal yeah, human not, design language. Lot. Yeah, but I mean, it's cool. Like, it's interesting to see where that's going because wouldn't it be rad if you could just, um, you know, like, oh crap, I need this part, and then you can just like buy the directions. Mm -hmm. and put it into your 3d printer and then you can have the the because it, in my in this fantasy 3d printers work in an hour or maybe 15 right. minutes, and then you can yeah, have right. a printed in 15 minutes <laughs> well, that's the, are, i watched the like, series on on amazon called upload i watched season one and two and they they yes. have food replicators like they're like oh i think the fat cartridge is running low like this doesn't taste that great you like know, in um, that, your two where she takes she puts exactly, in the little exactly exactly and, um there's also fifth element. i jumped ahead the hotel or the place in which upload is based, where they're supposed to be is it when they upload. No, it's in the town where I went to college. Oh, okay. So yeah, look it up. Montauk. New... Okay, Not I forget Montauk. what it's called. Jesus Mohonk. What is that? <laughs> Mohonk. The Mohonk Mountain House. Oh my gosh. Worth looking up. Are you also a seizure right, right now? <laughs> oh God, I forget. <laughs> it's the headband. It's the headband. Also, squeeze Spoiler in your brain. King based some of the shots. You know, if you put a cowboy hat on, you'd look just like Brett Michaels. Ooh. Is that the goal you were looking for tonight? <laughs> he's, he's taking his earbuds out. Ross has quit the podcast. <laughs> well, Emmy, we're going to move on and talk about the Golf R that he drove that we've been meaning to talk about for two weeks and uh, have never. Oh, we got to have a I don't know if this is something I'm supposed to do on the show or not, but. <laughs> oh, I think you got to leave the rest of the episode now. I love that you had that handy. <laughs> yes, is, I actually wear this like outside all the time because I, I just get sunburned. Yeah, it's like a sun hat. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. God, I this feel like, hang on, official... let me get, wait, let me get a hat. 
Wait, this I is the official the old white guy hat. Man, I don't have a straw hat. I'm not that old. Yeah. Ooh, VW hat. Oh, well, wait, yeah, but it might not fit over my <laughs> that's like Now a that te- I have all this hair. That's like a team hat, too. Like, that's like legit. It is. I think I got this when we did the um, the electric vehicle, the ID4 in yeah. Baja. Oh, that definitely looks like a team racing team. hat. Because they always saw. have like a weird early 90s vibe to them. Like the extra colors around the brim. Like this? Yeah. Like that to me always plays off like the early, like no matter what year yeah. the hat for the racing team was made, 1994 is like right where I put it in <laughs> for design language. I don't know why. Um, I saw an ID4 today and could not figure out what it was until I was behind it. No. It is a blob. <laughs> a 94 or an ID4. An yeah. ID4. Yeah. No, I actually I have a GTI in the in the driveway right now, which is fun because it's a manual and it's you know like super sprinting around town. But like that whole UX system is so bad. Oh, it's so bad. oh my and god. And today I turned on the car and just like no radio, just didn't work, didn't work. Didn't so I went, work. I voted. That was. I came back out after I voted because I voted because I'm in California and today we have voting. That was and, important. Uh, Hell yeah. Came back out and then it was fine. I'm just like. And needed an arrest. It's been resting in my driveway all night. <laughs> um, yes. To continue on the shitting on Volkswagen train, I spent a week with Golf R that left oh, that's- last Friday. And the the whole interface, I we I got my brother in the car because he's he's been a Golf R fan forever. He's like almost bought them 10 times. And I said, do me a favor, sit here and try to figure out how to do basic functions. <laughs> and he looked at it and like did the thing and it was like, I was like, dude, I'm pretty good with phones and computers and everything, but this is totally like yeah. as unintuitive as it gets. Yeah, um, it yeah. is a disaster. And then if you if you like rest your hand where I, where most people like to rest their hand, you'll end up either turning on the air conditioning or changing the temperature or changing the volume or whatever. And then <laughs> yes. yeah, so that's terrible. Um, mm-hmm. And then the it's, fact that I have to like press a button really and then do all my climate controls on the screen. I'm like, no, no, no. So is it, is it the same system as what's in the ID4 now too? It's yeah. just carried it's over to all of them? Thing. Yeah. I mean, fortunately you get actual like physical buttons to do the windows and the locks. Right, not the, the horrible door. things. Yeah, not, yeah. Like but the ID4, you just God. have those two buttons, right? Yeah. And yes. like, there's a switch for front and then a switch for rear. Yeah, yeah. but it's and not like a, it's a, still a haptic switch. It's not an actual switch. Yeah. On the center of the GTI and the Golf, uh, in the Golf R, because we don't get a normal Golf anymore. There are four buttons. There's Clima, which is climate. There's modes. Hold on, they couldn't spell mode. the whole word? No, they, they couldn't spell the whole the word. They could drop the T and the E. Um, they, and there's mode, which obviously changes your driving mode. There's assist, which is like, is it assist or is it like it, it basically helps that's all change. your that's all your like adaptive cruise control and lane keeping and all of those yeah things. yeah so it's like yeah. short for and systems. then there's yeah pretty much and there's one more that i can't remember because i can't I remember probably either. never push it but none of them are actual buttons so you have to like look that oh, it's got it's yeah. dangerous yeah um, yeah i'm okay. trying to get pictures of it right now and it's not even man no, it don't know. bother. Don't bother. It's um, and, and then driving the Golf R, I was like, you know, I remember when I drove like the first gen of this, and like it was really fun, and it was super rockets, mm-hmm. and like you felt like you were driving something. And then when I drove the newest one, I'm like, well, this is just boring now. <laughs> okay, is the oh, GTI yeah, so, the same? Climb what's that? Assist. Oh, park menu. Yeah. So the the oh, button right, on the right, bottom right. left, the button um helps you do like the automated parking which right the car's 165 inches long or something like that you don't need help parking it yeah i mean and it's then america on the left, everybody does on the left of the steering wheel that's like where your your lights and a couple of other things are connect are that's where you turn all that stuff on but like sometimes i turn it on and i'm like do i are is everything on like are my tail lights on or do i just have daytime running lights on because it's not very clear yeah. And it's to the point where I get out and walk around the car and make sure that all of my stuff is turned on. Because I don't want to be that dick that's driving down Um, the road with no taillights. So So, rear defog and forward defog is associated with fog lights for the front and rear with their buttons above. Like, that's the weirdest little... that's the defroster buttons. Right, I know. But, like, some people call it defog. Like, it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All, is that how they grouped it by like, I'm going to turn the fog off inside my car and turn the fog on outside? Like it's, it's such it's, a weird it group is, of buttons. It's a disaster. It makes sense that the guy that approved all this got fired. Did he? Um, yeah, he got, he got Das Boot. But I, you know, I like I listen to podcasts in the car because I listen to music when I'm home working and I unintentionally changed podcasts probably 25 times because of that stupid button on the steering wheel, not even button, like the, the slider, you know? Right. And it's, oh yeah, it's not a button. It's you slide your finger like up and down and everything above it is kind of like a button. So it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And that. Yeah. Yeah, material down by the start stop button is like the cheapest plastic I've seen in a car in the last 10 years. So it's a good thing it's fast as fuck because that's what's got going for it. Yeah, but once it wouldn't let it shifted for me because it's only automatic, right? There's no manual because I remember I had the automatic. Um, and I was in race mode and it like upshifted for me. And I'm like, well, I'm in race mode. What are you doing? No, <laughs> get no, out of I, my way. <laughs> I say when you, when you change, if I'm in normal mode or if I'm in comfort mode, fine, you can shift for me, but you cannot <laughs> shift for me when I'm in race mode. Yeah. It's not how this world works. It's yeah. And then look at that tiny dinky little shifter. It's like Porsches, but in Porsches, it's like. It's terrible mm. in the Porsche too. So, yeah. But at least in the Porsche. Do they want you like, to use the paddles? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, using the paddles is fine, but I still got to put it in gear through that dumb little stick. They want you to not buy the car. They want you to buy a They want you to not buy the car. Yeah, they want you to buy an Atlas or, you know, like a fucking Taos or whatever that piece of shit is. (laughs) Tiguan? Is that still a thing? It's been so long since I've looked at Volkswagens. Let's not talk about this anymore. The ID4, like, I looked at and paid attention to just because it was a new EV and it seemed accessible to people with the price and things like that. Yeah, but then like again, I could, couldn't figure out how to turn on the radio when I was in it. <laughs> it took me forty minutes of my hour and a half oh, long test drive to find and out how to. And when that happens, I feel like oh, I'm such like a jitterbug, you know? Like maybe I should get a jitterbug phone and just get it, just you know, get it all. Like well, that's grandma thing, just like, out here with her gray hair, I can't figure out her car. I mean, it's really like, eye opening because you know my wife has a CX five. This is her second one. She had one for three years before this one. And I'm driving the new Miata this week. And the infotainment in the Mazda is bad. Like no, it's compared to compared to Uconnect or Sync or no. like pretty much anything, you know, the GM stuff is great now. Mazda's infotainment is terrible. It's the uh, worst. And I, I keep hitting the fucking button in the middle when I go to sh- like rest my hand on the shifter in the Miata. Yeah. But it is absolutely nothing compared to how bad the full yeah. swag go tape is. <laughs> like it's just oh god it's so upsetting like you know it, i'm so glad all my cars are like pre-infotainment stuff yeah so, right. i mean i wish i do wish i had apple carplay sometimes but like it's just nice to just have like a kenwood stereo or like a little alpine stereo like yeah. with bluetooth at least yeah, but no, it's hard to use Bluetooth in a Miata. Right, like, well, especially with no top on all the time. Like, yeah, uh, but I mean, even when the top is is up, it's it, they're just loud. The move in the Miata is the one, and I say this using plugged-in headphones. Like the one AirPod. But the one EarPod. So you can still hear, but you can actually like listen or, or talk. Yeah, yeah. So, so, no, that was the fun part of my, my trip when we were talking about the music earlier, is like I was navigating with my Android phone plugged into the Ford sync system and he was playing music with his iPhone. So we, we had to, we had to figure out how to get it to display the map, but yet still play his music instead of going oh to my music all the time. Dude, We've, if It's real. There's a way to do it. If you want to talk oh, about it, is, we'll explain the procedure <laughs> in the Volkswagen. If you want to have Google maps up on Apple CarPlay and also listen to nice sticker on your water bottle, by the way. Thanks. Um, my stick or water bottle. Yeah, speaking of Emmy, send me your address and I'll send you a bunch of stickers. Okay. Okay. Of stickers. Um, but if you want to have Google Maps up and also listen to the Sirius XM on the car, it is impossible. <laughs> I spent probably 25 minutes working, like trying to figure that out. And then eventually I was like, yeah, fuck it. I, I don't Wait, know. you couldn't just change the source of the audio, but no. yet still have. No, no, no. When you push the drop down to change source, it is either CarPlay or Bluetooth. It does not oh. offer any radio options whatsoever. Wow, that's so, very angry Volkswagen. I feel like 
now that we've spent 20 minutes shitting on Volkswagen, we can probably move on. <laughs> well, I can tell you about my fun issue that I figured out with the Suburban. Um, I went and got an oil change a while back and they were like, hey, your tires are getting kind of low on the front. I was like, these are brand new tires. What do you mean? How many miles are there on them roughly? Like, um, I have a spreadsheet. You have a spreadsheet? Of course. I'm of course. not that organized. I don't have a spreadsheet for anything. I well, feel like I write down what I do. Or Google's like on a post-it note somewhere. Well, like, but sheets is like on my phone and which is the only reason I have this. Like if I actually had to go sit down at a computer and like input it, I would never do it, but it's all on my phone. Um, I always know what my VIN is too, because that drives me nuts when I was like, what's your VIN? So that put the tires on brand new tires, 12,000 miles ago. Um, and then installed a lift in March and did the measurements. And my engineer buddy, Ron, who's a great guy was like, we're good. The angles match. And then over time, driving it with the leveling kit and uh, repeatedly going to my car wash that constantly tugs at the left front tire when you go in to move the vehicle through. Oh, you're one of those. I'm one of those. Somehow, or did not somehow, got the vehicle out of alignment. And so the outside quarter of both front tires, it, the, it was towed in. And so like, it was just gone. And it was gone in like a period of like, 3,500 to 5,000 miles. Like it was like, didn't change the driving dynamics whatsoever. Other than like, as I got back into it, after spending a week in the transit van, I was like, Suburban's kind of twitchy. Like <laughs> I hadn't noticed that before. Um, Cause it, it probably happened slowly over time kind of thing. But I reached out to Fredestein and just be like, Hey guys, uh, this is what I'm experiencing with the tires right now. I want to talk it out with you guys. Um, they were super chill and we got two new fronts. So there are now two new fronts on the tire. The degrees off that the alignment was in the front is laughable. Oh, Just, do you have the sheet? Can you I don't have it on me. It's downstairs, oh. but I'll definitely I'll post it up on the on the podcast Instagram account because it's Please it's do. bad <laughs> <laughs> when you see like what it was to what it is now. Like the backs were yeah. great, and to be honest, the rear tires. Um, I didn't. I only changed the front two. It's not an all wheel drive suburban. I normally run it in rear wheel drive, so like I know I'm not super concerned about different circumference in the front Mm -hmm. and the back Um, but the backs look they look fantastic they still look new and that's why I was like what is happening it gets to the point where the cords were actually starting to show on the right front god yeah and I just it the truck was driving fine like it didn't I was like I'm hearing more tire noise I wonder what that's about and then like I got the oil changes (laughs) they're like you know your tires are wearing down on the outside I'm like no they're brand new what are you talking about and then like I actually Ah. went and looked at it and I was like oh okay I'm an idiot. It's not the tire. It's just literally user error on my part. Um, but I drove it today. Yeah, too many car washes. Like I <laughs> yeah. think it was like six in like a three week or three week window. Like I was going like twice. What? Well, it's unlimited. Like it's in a monthly fee. So like. No, but who washes their car that? I, I wash my truck like <laughs> once every. So like I've, I've when washed you... Lexus. Yeah, but the Lexus has like all kinds of like stuff on the outside. So you can't just run it through the tunnel where the Suburban's still stock looking. It just runs through the tunnel. And because I signed up, I get the quick lane too. So like, there's no line to wait in. I pull up, I hit the button, I'm in. I'm in and out in like five minutes. Of course, I yeah, go but, more Yeah, but it ruined your car. You should take your alignment bill and your tire bill and send it to the to the guy because if they have, you can't be the only person that's having this problem. That's well, and that's the weird thing is like some car washes are rear tire and this one's front tire. Mm-hmm. Like for we're pushing them down and like yeah. I, I might have to change to go to the one that is the rear. That's why I like the ones where you just drive in and then it does all this stuff around you and then right. you it. see I like the ones where you drive in and you put the coins in the thing and then you wash it yourself. Yeah, I don't like touching yeah. coins anymore. No, I have <laughs> The, the problem is here up in the desert, all the water is hard water. So like, you normally, I just like drive out. I'm like, oh, whatever. But here you're like, you really have to dry your car. Otherwise you get all the water spots and stuff. All spots, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, and I just spent a bunch of time with transit vans in like self-serve car washes like because they don't fit in anything. Like one was almost 11 feet tall. Like we had to go find a truck one to actually like be able to clean it off. And the amount of salt from the salt. Anyway, that's last show. It was awful. Yeah. Actually, it's two yeah. shows ago, basically. Dis- dissertation on how, how messy that was. <laughs> so yeah, I do. I drove it today. I drove it all the way up to work. So it was like 70, 70 plus miles on it today. And it drives like a dream again. And I, was, I was getting really frustrated with it. And I was like, wait, is that a wheel bearing going out? No, it's just my tire being awful. Or Are my you alignment. a simple solution and not a wheel bearing or something that was a little right. bit more, it's you true. know? It's true. Like, you know, hub, tie rod, axle, diff. Yeah, it's better when it's something 
easy. Just like. dumb alignment and user error. Yeah. This is your weekly PSA to do an alignment every, every time you do suspension every, work. Every, always, yeah, yeah. every time you change anything. So, so. yeah. So where you want to start, Emmy? You got quite a bit going here and it's kind of all over the place. Thanks. It's been a I, hot minute since we talked. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, um, I guess like kind of the latest cool thing that I got to do was um, me and two other journalists uh, went with Audi. We flew probably 30 hours to spend less than, well, I guess it was more than 30 hours because we flew there and back to spend less than 24 hours in Sardinia to drive an out lap and three hot laps and a cool down lap. And each lap was like 50 seconds probably. Yeah. Uh, but it was in there, it was in their deck, their um, electric, electric motivated. I don't wanna say it's an electric mm -hmm. car because it they ran it kind of like a Chevy Volt where they still had an onboard generator, gas powered generator, and that charged up the battery and then the battery charged, spent the motors and then the motors of what's turned the wheel. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That's the show car, which, um, but it's pretty freaking awesome. You guys, like, it's pretty amazing. So oh. we were out there, they had um, one of the, one of the actual navigators, Dakar navigators there. So I, of course, I'm just like asking him all these questions about like, how do you navigate on the road book? And what do you do with this and that and that? Yeah, that guy. This he, poor guy. <laughs> he was so great. He's like 41 years old from like Sweden. He's like, I do not understand this lady. It's like, I just know how to drive the car. He's like, I don't know. I just read the road book and I turn on the air conditioning. That's not how a Swedish person sounds, but anyway. Um, so he, but uh, he was great and he was really very generous with his time. But, um, so we got to do like one out lap and then three hot laps. And it was it was weird because I expected just from all of my other electric car experience, I expected to have a lot of regen. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna have to break. I'm just gonna regen before turns. But so, they like turned it, yeah. they turned it all off. Oh, okay. I'm like, all right, so I'm just basically driving a car. It's yep, got left foot brake and yeah, then I'm just got a left foot brake on this thing. And the only difference now is that I just have instant torque quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the weird thing for me was that that thing has so much travel and all of this stuff that I'm used to driving in race applications, are, you know, eight inches of travel, 10 inches of travel. And this thing yeah. is way more than that. So it was interesting to kind of get used to how, and it's all super soft, right? So it was interesting to get used to all of that body roll and seeing like how quickly I could get back on the throttle. Um, what's great is that um, I mean, it's all wheel drive, but it'll still like oversteer like a bitch. So that's really fun. Um, <laughs> what's the, the chassis? Is what's it that? just, is it just a tube chassis or mm -hmm. what's underneath it? Okay. Lots, oh, so they, of pulling, yeah. lots of pulling. There's like six radiators in that thing. I mean, it's, it's nuts. Cause they have, it's the two liter, it's a two liter, uh, four cylinder engine. And that is what runs the, the generator. generator. Okay. Um, and What's interesting is the co-driver can turn that engine on and off at will. So the computer will turn it on, but if the co-driver knows like, okay, we've got soft sand coming up, we got to power up this battery, he can turn on the, the generator. And it's weird because you have no, um, there's no connection with what your foot is doing and what that sound is, because it'll just go straight at like, I don't know, 55, 6,000 RPMs or something. So you're like left of braking and returning or slowing down and the thing is still, ah! <laughs> How disconcerting is that because like after a certain amount of driving and it's i mean for people who care about and like cars it's a pretty small yeah. amount you start to associate speed with noise yeah you know yeah. so is it like just totally yeah it's weird because you have that and that's really really loud in your ears but then in the background then you also have the sound of the electric motors so it's this weird your senses are just all it's it's all crazy it's all totally crazy. it's almost like you can drive yeah. faster <laughs> if you're more in tune with the ev noises and ignoring the ice yeah, you, engine behind yeah you, you have to ignore that and i'm sure just because it is a constant drone i'm sure that after a day or so of driving it it just becomes white noise yeah. but mm -hmm. for the you know five minutes that i was in the car exactly. I was like, you were not in it that long yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, and okay. it wasn't, you know, the course that they had us on was just a little uh, rally cross course. There was a jump. They wouldn't let us take it, which was kind of sad. Um, but it was great to just really, 
for the experience of actually being in that vehicle and just seeing how it was all set up and the, um, you know, the center console and what the navigator has got. They didn't have all of the rally computers or anything in there, which I was kind of interested to see, but all that stuff was taken out. But um, yeah, it's a remarkable vehicle and um, I can't wait to see how they're going to do this year in the Dakar. You know, in the end, last year they had some, they had a rough first couple of days. Um, Petter Hansel like ripped a wheel and a hub off or something. Um, but one of them, one is they were, they campaigned three vehicles, one, one, at least a couple of stages. And then the Swedish team, they ended up in the top 10, wow. just pretty awesome. And I mean, the thing is, yeah. right. Like people are like, well, you're cheating with the, you know, gas engine. Well, you guys, it doesn't matter. Like that's the, that's the technology we have now. Right. The batteries, right. the batteries that we have right. now can only hold so much. And you're racing for speed. Like in the Rebel Rally, mm -hmm. I could stop to charge because speed wasn't a factor. Yeah. But now you're racing for speed. So you have to figure out a way to get juice into those batteries quickly. You could swap the batteries. And that I'm sure was something that they thought about. Or you could go by this because you can dump 40 gallons of fuel or however much they need in you know 11 seconds if they need to. And then they can go off. And so they're not penalized by charging up their battery, you know? Yeah, different means to the same end. It's not exactly. it's not creating something totally, you know, it's not like hydrogen or something that certainly <laughs> has twice the power output <laughs> and the same power density, you know. Yeah, well, and they had to cut their because in the in that class they had to they all can't run past X horsepower. So even though those motors are capable of producing more, they had to limit the limit it by the computer. So and I can't remember exactly what it was. It was like three something, something like that. Still, yeah. I mean, it's still a lot. I mean, that tr that thing's pretty heavy, and I would be real interested to see how it does in the dunes. Um, but having that like push button inflate where you can just inflate and deflate on the go was like that's amazing. It's magical. <laughs> I don't understand how it works. Oh, but the tires are moving around. How does somebody it asked me if right. if I could do that on my truck recently, and I was like. No, no, I have a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. You gotta go get like a, you gotta get yeah. like a yeah. Stevenson, like a decommissioned Stevenson, whatever truck from the military that has yeah. the system. Yeah. Everything like, from an H1 and just plop it. Yeah, no, that, that would be such a helpful thing yeah. for somebody to put on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And there would be like three people that would contribute and it would be us. Yeah, we're on Shark Tank. And they're yeah. like, sorry, what? <laughs> What's your market for this? Here. No, really. This is a five hundred thousand dollar market. Right. We <laughs> went so like, twelve billion dollar markets. Yep. Uh, YouTube uh, overlanders are gonna love this. <laughs> um, but okay, so I, first of all, I don't think we realized that it was that this adventure was in Sardinia. And it was in not Sardinia. Like you know, in in California. So mm -hmm. I don't know awesome. why. I have no idea what. Well. When I got there, I realized that there were other European journalists that were on, also on this trip. Um, it still seems to me that it would have been easier. I, I don't know. I don't know why they did it that way. And because the track wasn't really anything special. It was just like a little flat turn, 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 straight, turn, turn, was straight. This, was this oh, during no. a time of year where a German PR rep would rather be in Sardinia as opposed to Germany? I was going to say, was it Almost. like a nice... <laughs> vacation destination for somebody on the PR team? Almost end of April. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's a little warmer in Italy than it is in Germany. Then. Yep. 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 So speaking of warmer and speaking of rally and there we go. Chris, see, we're, we're getting good at the segues. Yeah. Can we talk about Saudi Arabia? And, and oh, that? yes. Oh my God. What? Dude, that thing was so, it was so crazy. I, my expectations for everything, I went in there with like all of these prejudices and I came out being like, you were wrong. <laughs> like about I, the about country, country, like what you expect from it. Yeah, about the culture, about um, the people, about mm -hmm. not necessarily the food because I've always loved Middle Eastern food. So I'm like, that was pretty <laughs> good. But like I was, first of all, they wanted us to put, um, they wanted us to bring little American flag stickers and they're like, yeah. And so we want you to, you know, have your name on the truck and then put your flag next to your name. And I'm like, I'm not putting no American flag on my truck in Perfect. Saudi Arabia, are you out of your mind? And then when I got there, like, I mean, people loved us. They loved us. They wanted to talk to us. They would like bring their kids up to us so they could like practice English. They're like, you, you must come to my house for dinner. Like it wow. was, 
it was amazing. It was amazing. And I, and I just expected people to be, I didn't expect the warmth. I didn't expect the culture of helping and being hospitable mm-hmm. to everybody. Like it was, it was such an eye opener and I would 100% go back. Yeah. Richard and Ashley echoed the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's funny because Chris just pulled up that you know, I say Instagram I saw Ash's and, comment and in the middle of Ash's it. Ash's yeah. comment was on it. So yeah, it, it sounds, you know, you after having, you know, the three of us spent our lives in the US, especially since like the year 2000, you develop an image of what yeah. life over there is like and and interactions with people over there are like. And it's it's really incredible to hear from multiple people that it's like exactly the opposite and it's just open arms you know we're all for it like we're all people and i was i was really nervous about like how we were going to be treated by the men you know because Mm -hmm. so so women just got the right to drive in 2018 and uh and like i'm not saying that like saudi is like 100 gung ho on women's rights because they certainly have a long way to go but like you guys are somewhere and this is a great place to start and so by having this motorsports event that was just for women, it's a way to, um, you know, signify to the women of the country, but also signify to the world in general that like Saudi wants to open up and they still have a long way to go. Like, you know, there were some not good things that happened the day before in terms of like, oh, we don't like you. We're going to cut your head off. You know, like, like there's shit still yeah. goes down there. But I was worried about how I would be treated by the men there. And um, mm-hmm. we'd be driving along and like a Hilux would pull up next to us and it's like, you know, stuffed with all these dudes and they would be, oh my God, and they're clapping and they're giving us a thumbs up and they've got the phones out and we're That's like, great. yeah, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> you know? It was, that was amazing. And then on the first day of the rally, we had, there were a bunch of spectators that were, that lined the route. Well, all men, I didn't, I don't think I saw any women, but it was just nice to know I'll that like, there was some, there was a lot of support there that I saw personally from a lot of the men in the culture, which was great. I'm trying so hard to not get political, but like the state of America right now, there are there are some sections that yeah. think similarly. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's fucking heartbreaking because like we're supposed to be the leaders of the free world and, and we see that kind of thing happening where women just get the right to drive in 2018, which is like- inconceivable to to our country but you know you look at our country's past and you know like what some of the country is still pushing for and it's um yeah it's troubling but events like this where it turns and flips the coin it's Uh it's good it it only brings about good yeah so and it was you know what was great is there were women from all walks of life that that ran in this rally we had women that were that showed up and they were in you know jeans and a t-shirt and a ponytail and a ball cap or no ball cap or whatever and then there were some women that showed up like just in a headscarf and then there were a couple women that were like full-on veiled and everybody just went out and did their best in this rally and like trust me like it was a shit show like there was a lot of this when you were like this is not (laughs) just in terms because you know it was kind of like (laughs) <laughs> kind of like Dakar style navigating where we had a road book and we had a rally computer and stuff, but um, it's because you're not going for time. It's pretty easy to get all your checkpoints when you have a road right. book and you have a rally computer that tells you like, oh, you're within a hundred meters of the checkpoint. Like it's not hard if yeah. you're not worried about time. So the mm-hmm. way they wanted to differentiate it was have these average speed challenges um, and so that was a big differentiator, uh, you know, try driving 34 kilometers an hour for 15 minutes. Like it's, it's really hard, um, because it was always slow. It was never fast. It was always yeah. a slow speed. Um, and then they just nailed us, nailed us on penalties. And a lot of the rules were not like, there was a, there were things in the rule book that was like, take your, like for, for, uh, um, tech, you have to have your fire suit teched and this tech and that tech. Okay, well, we didn't have to wear fire suits. So I'm like, so what are you guys actually enforcing? Because you have in the rule book that we need fire suits, but we don't need fire suits. So mm. how do I know what's actually right in the rules and what's not? And that seems to be like, they didn't really understand. 
Um, this is the first running, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah, have to, there are. Yeah, you have allegedly to get... <laughs> there are also some racetracks that require helmets and protective gloves and window right. down, and allegedly don't enforce it. Right, so. but if you don't enforce that, how else do I know what else in the rally book you're not enforcing? Right. right. So because then I can make an argument and say, well, you didn't enforce this rule over here, so why are you enforcing this time control? You know, and we That's got fair. we got busted for. Um, you know, nobody really understood the whole like transit and then time control and then go. And so a bunch of people were like stacked up in the time control and you're only, you're only supposed to spend like a maximum of like five minutes in that time control. And when we got there, we couldn't get up to where we needed to, go. to start yeah. in those five minutes. So we got a penalty and I'm like, yeah, but we couldn't like, what do you want me to do? Fly over all these people? Like I got to get my car up there somehow. And we argued and argued and they weren't, they weren't going to hear anything of it, but you know, like Honestly, I wanted to do better. We ended up sixth, um, which is a bummer, but it was also just great to go and have the experience and, you know, show a lot of the women that had never competed before, just how to compete, you know, it was great. Yep. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, again, that echoes what we've heard elsewhere too, like just bringing new experiences to people who otherwise might not have had them. Yeah. is part of what this off-road community is about. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Um, how long were you over there? Uh, well, the rally was only like three days. It was not long enough at all. Um, we got there a couple of days ahead of time just to, to pick up our car. So we got, um, they provided us, the rally provided us with um, Toyota Fortuners, which is kind of like a beefy Highlander. It's built yep. on the Hilux chassis. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. pretty decent car. I mean, it's, you need to do some things with it in order to get clearance and, out and step out of it. <laughs> the transmission is your typical Toyota transmission and it's terrible. Yep. Um, but Can't you know, the bones of it and the low gearing and all that stuff there, it's, it's a really good, a really good truck. Um, I did crawl underneath it just to make sure that, I mean, I'm not a mechanic, but like, let's just make sure everything is okay underneath there. And it, I'm pretty sure this was just like a rental car, like, because no, oh, boy. That it, it was the underneath side was, covered in mud and i found a coat hanger wrapped around the front axle and i was like what is happening <laughs> then i'm like stuck in the brake calipers but then i'm thinking I'm like is this some kind of macgyver fix that like oh, no I don't remove it, it. yeah right, I don't right. Know. if you I don't touch know. it what yeah like what's gonna happen you know maybe yeah. somebody yeah slightly concerning but eh, everything's fun no Next it was time, good it was good. hopefully it won't be rental cars we'll see um that sounds yeah pretty freaking I mean, great though and they didn't take us on any kind of difficult terrain you know like we did a little bit of dunes but it that was more like sand highway stuff it's not like we were climbing up dunes or down they were little like two foot things no nah, we're know, about status yeah a lot of these women have never driven before and you can't expect someone to, to climb oldsmobile hill and glamis when you know you've driven on your street and that's it right. so yeah, so I get it. Sorry. I found the Andy photo. <laughs> Did you find that? The... Oh, <laughs> of yeah. everyone with their oh, awards. <laughs> like, considering we know two thirds of the women in this photo, like it's hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yep. Why does no, Lynn look tired? <laughs> no, Lynn is going, oh my gosh, because they won a stage, which was awesome. I'm thinking on the last day they won a stage. Oh my gosh. Um, and then the other two women are, um, that's a mother daughter team. And they, uh, they were just really consistent the entire time. They were, they did really well just, and one of them, cause they had never competed before. I don't think. So one of them, they both are drivers. And then one of them had to navigate and they were like, Oh, oh no, I navigate. You, you can't switch off. It's just one, once you're, I think you could, but they decided not to, I don't remember. I would never trade off, but <laughs> How would I do that? I want to navigate. That's too much responsibility. Oh, we haven't we haven't talked Ditto. to you since we had the uh, Sedona Rebecca episode. Oh, oh my god, that was dude. so stressful. Dark navigating, oh, yeah. navigating like that is so like I've done primitive map map navigation in North Maine, like instead of using GPS and phone, yep. like we could. Oh my god, and that like. Like borderline anxiety attacks. I had to have a nap after after that episode. (laughs) (laughs) And not because of what they said was so boring, but like it was so like just yeah, yeah, it's so much. 
of the woman with like all the math equations. Over yes, her head. it was a hundred percent that. That was the whole me episode. That episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we did some of that in in the Jamil rally in Rally Jamil as well. Um, just to, for the average speed, we would get we would do some of those things just to keep us on track. But yeah, you know, navigating like that's real hard. Yeah. I, yeah, I can like like I said I can always like get you to like town like I can get you back I can get you I can get you back to the bivouac you know like I'm as long as I can see something giant like I'll be fine but they get us like this to pinpoints yeah pinpoint. so and you guys are doing a different rally right you're doing Sonora? we are gonna try um I mean you know there's a lot of stuff that comes into it but I'm working I'm working with some manufacturers on getting a vehicle um to do the Sonora rally and that takes place in October it's uh it's a five-day uh, rally that's kind of like a mini Dakar, right? So everything's done by roadbook, um, mm-hmm. and then you have your little rally computer. And um, there's thankfully there's no checkpoints that you have to plot. You just <laughs> have to follow your roadbook. You just have to follow your roadbook. Um, yeah, that's a terrible picture of us. Um, <laughs> you posted it. <laughs> I know. But I was like, why am I doing that? Um, so oh yeah, gosh. so that shows you like um, I don't remember what all these symbols mean. But the, um, this is uh, another conversation. We, sure we talked to Sedona know. and Rebecca. They were like, hold on. Every symbol has something. Yeah. Different. I mean, I can make things up for what each of them mean, but I don't think that would be really podcast appropriate. So, right. So, <laughs> the, one, the one that says 57.66. So, that's your total kilometers. The 450, I think that means that it, the waypoint opens up when you get within 400 meters of it. And then you validate it when you get within 50 meters of it. And then right next to it, that other little square, it means that there are dunes and that there is a cross and that there'll be a truck there with um, tools if you need help. And the cap you should be on, the direction you should be on is 310 degrees. And then Kino Cross is just like, that's the name of that area. And OP means off piece. Well, yes, of course it's off piece. I'm in the middle of dunes. Um, <laughs> Good God. You know, but the thing, that's, the thing that we found that was easier about this when we did the training was, like in the rebel, we never have anything that tells you how close you are to the checkpoint. And right. with this, when you get within 400 meters of that checkpoint, your rally computer will go ding. And then you get an mm-hmm. arrow that tells you where the, where the checkpoint is. So then all you have to do is just follow the arrow. And I'm like, well, shit, I can do this. It's a cheat code. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally cheap. Now, having said uh... that, can I do that fast? I don't know. We'll see. That's why we want to do the, that's why we would like to. So do this it. one's, this one's got a speed element to it. Then This one has a speed element to it. So um, and- I mean, our goal obviously will be just to finish and not break the, not break whatever car we're in, but um, yeah, there's a speed element. So. And this is in the Sonoran desert in Arizona? Yeah, in Northern, in Northern Mexico. Um, Northern not, Mexico. Yeah. We trained out of San Luis, Colorado, which is right on the border, just on the other side of Yuma. And uh, then there's some dunes. It's basically like the extension of the um, of the Imperial Dunes, Glamis, you know, as they cross the border, it's just kind of that extension. And it's, you know, what's great is like, there's so less, there's so few people and like, there's no whoops and like everything's smooth and great. You're like, oh, wow, is, is this what off-roading was like back in the day? Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's in October. So hopefully we'll get our poop in a group for that. Cool. That sounds yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we'll see I'm, I'm pivoting, pivoting you to the Red Beetle. What, what's going on here? This is a yes. new car. I haven't seen it a lot. Oh, well, okay. So, <laughs> so the Red Beetle, uh, the Red Baja Bug. There she is. Um, so, so uh, this is it the same my... skid plate and bumper as Buddy. No, no. This was my dad's. This was my dad's vehicle. Um, yeah. He passed away in November, okay. and so now it's my vehicle. Um, I raced this once. This was actually the first car I ever raced. And uh, it, this now has an Ecotec in it. So it's okay. like more reliable, which is awesome. Um, like my dad was never great at prep your shit. <laughs> but like it's dirty. There's like beer cans everywhere. Um, there's, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it needs some, it needs some help. Um, the, and speaking of twitchy tires, oh my God, driving those super diggers on the highway is terrible. You is just it? think about drive, you think about turning and that thing will turn. It's crazy. Don't think. You just like don't <laughs> yeah. turn feel, okay, we're turning it. Um, so I was I this past weekend when I was down in Baja, uh, there was just like a little fun run. 
that I was going to take the truck, take the Baja to. And as I like pulled into the staging area, the little coupler on the transmission broke. And I was like, but I didn't know it at the time. And I'm just like, oh my God, I just lost second gear. Fuck, I just lost first, I just lost reverse. And it's because the little coupler thing had decided to not <laughs> work anymore. So that is Johnny Johnson, who, you know, he was like super, he was the man, the Baja man back in the seventies, um, knew knows a ton about Volkswagen. So the next, so I left the car there. And then the next day um, he had a part and he helped me install it, which was really fun. So oh, it's so great. Yeah. It looks like he's, he's off road. Oh dude, that guy just, I mean, he has stories like you would not believe. He has stories like, yeah, back when I was racing with James Garner and back when I was racing with, you know, all those other old, oldie timey Baja guys, it's just, you know, Rod Hall and all these. Ivan Stewart and them. Yeah, yeah. Ivan Stewart. Like he knows all those guys because that, that was his era was right when Baja started. So, uh, yeah, so now I have this, now I have this Baja bug. So I'm like, you know, if, if I don't get a vehicle, I can always drop some money into that Baja bug. It would take a lot of money. It would take a lot of money. It would take a lot of money. And I and there's a lot of stuff in the dunes. And I, I've i never driven that car in the dunes. And it's two-wheel drive. But it's lightweight and it's got a lot of power. And like if I air down. The weight's lot, over the right part. Yeah, yeah. I So I don't know. I mean, we would definitely need to do some workarounds. But we're not in it to win it. We're in it to finish. So if we have to skip some checkpoints, then we skip some checkpoints you know yep. 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 you know you gotta you gotta roll with what you got so we'll see we'll see so that might yep. make another appearance someday we'll see. Well, I, I had fun watching it when you were playing with it so oh good, 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 good. <laughs> i like baja bugs are a thing like i like i like those a lot like sedona's I mean, and yours now them. like oh man it's so it's so great there's a bottle opener on either side because you never want to have to walk around the car to like <laughs> open your beer at the end of the day it's it's like right on the door in the first yeah 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 it's right so there it's right, like if there were a b pillar that's where it would that's where it is exactly i think a baja bug is next for me now that i've dabbled in off-road and miata i think that's the natural crossroads well no if you've now you've dabbled in off-road and miata now it's lifted miata time yeah, yeah. Which that actually I, that leads into our next episode that we're going to record tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. What exactly went into the lift on yours? Do you know? Um, like there, it's, it's, basically, it's, it's basically it's basically screens and, and mounting points, sort of. Oh God. Spacers essentially. Oh God. Um, and then tires. So much. Yeah. So. And cutting it's, fenders. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never not be cutting fenders. I will never not be cutting fenders on that car. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a kit that you can get uh, from a place called Paco Motorsports. Paco, yeah. yeah, that's three inches. Yeah, that's three inches. This is only a four inch lift because it adds the springs. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the tires and everything, there's like 10 inches of ground clearance. And then by mm -hmm. taking off the bumper and the, you know, the bumpers and all that stuff, my angles are all pretty good. But the problem is that with those tires and then the two spares in the rear, which like, do you need two spares? No. If I get two flat tires in that car, I'm an idiot, but, um, <laughs> uh, but there's, a, there's some extra weight in this vehicle that it was not designed for. So like right. I've taken out all the glass that I can take out. I took out the soft top completely. Um, I took out so the, the uh, air conditioning and I'm st it's still over stock weight. So are those E30 wheels? They are. <laughs> so I came on the car when I bought it and I haven't bent one yet. So great. It works. Yeah. Okay. We'll explore this in the future. I want to get a little autocross under my belt before I okay. start. Before he goes rally cross style. Yeah. Before, ra before rally cross. Well, and the thing is, is though, on rally cross, you don't even need to like have a lift on it. You can just need to put it in different tires because it's always smooth for rally cross. <sighs> yep. Yeah. I, just because I'm rally cross, I have to do it. Drive, I have to drive like four hours to get to a rally cross event. So that's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna guess it's expensive. I get you. Yeah, I it's, it's a four cylinder. I mean, it's got great mileage. Bullshit! Have you ever driven one? <laughs> no. Terrible I'm, mileage. Oh man, I'm six yeah. foot four. <laughs> In whatever your fifth, if you're fifth or sixth gear, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's not an. It's not a tall or short. I can't remember which oh, one no. it is. All it does is it just keeps the revs up. So like in buddy with the 538 gears that I have in him, 
You five thirty eight, and buddy. Yeah, I do. Holy shit! Okay, wow. So like, well, because it brings it back to like vague torque feeling. <laughs> Otherwise, you cannot <laughs> roll those massive twenty seven inch oh tires my God, that's with a hundred pound feet of torque. Like it's that not gonna happen. Hysterical. But in that car, like 65 miles an hour is probably 45, 4,600 RPM. Yeah, mine has, uh, <laughs> it has 195s on it. Uh-huh. And I think 80 is like 4,300 RPM. Yeah, it's like driving an angry bumblebee. Yeah. You know. Yes, mileage is great at 55. Yeah, sure, but I you know. No. Yeah, on the meanwhile, West Coast. meanwhile, the ND. I've been driving this ND for a week, and I've been driving it like an absolute asshole, and it's averaging thirty-seven. Yeah, yeah, because they finally they finally made it so that your top gear drops their revs, right? Drops it's your unbelievable. It's go like I had an NC for two years and change. It's the change. The difference is just crazy. Yeah. Well, the NC was terrible. Hey, so they look like jelly beans, and they were heavy. They were heavy, relatively, and they did look like jelly beans, but I loved mine. I know. Look at that garage, though, huh? Look at all three of those. I'm like, I totally so many Miatas. That's, that's Too that's many great. Miatas. Too many. Yeah, I don't, I just don't fit well in them. Like, I'm, I'm about an inch too tall. You can get yeah. uh, seats that drop lower, that lower the seat that help. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm 5'9", and I, I wouldn't want to be any taller. Right. And see, I'm, I've got about, yeah a lot of inches yeah. yeah especially when you start putting the helmet on and stuff then it starts getting oh god yeah no dude i did that in the fall like when i was at road america i, I got in a brz with my helmet on and i'm a little short of six four and no i was fine like i mean i yeah. touched but like and then i tried to like wedge myself into the miata steering is great feedback yeah i love it i love it which way does the track go to the right i don't know what's happening <laughs> Everything yeah. I just keep looking uh, over there. I what wanted if, to drive the, the Miata, just they co-pilot wouldn't let and me. the driver are both really tall. Do they both have to go that way with their heads, or does can one go that way and one go that way, or, or do you both go that <laughs> way? So your heads go together and you're like, okay, no, you're staying centered. <laughs> <laughs> you think about weird things. Yeah. Yeah. I think this, this is a good point about. to end the show tonight, actually. I think there we go. So I, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Off in the weeds. Yep. So, uh, but, Emmy, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, I did have I did have a, an event, life event happen. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been working for CNET Cars for like six and a half years now. Um, but my position just got eliminated. Right. Yeah, like last week. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't know if I want to like look for a full time or if I want to like join the freelance gang. Um, but I am happy to listen to any and all pitches. <laughs> so my, uh, you can get in touch with me on the socials. I'm at yeah, Emmy, essentially everywhere. Um, yeah, underscore Emmy on the Twitters, but at yeah, Emmy on uh, Instagram. So yeah, if anyone has any cool opportunities, I would love to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're, we're on board with you talking to yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. Anybody <laughs> listening, just, just hire me. Just, I was like. <laughs> I was like, I felt like anyone I'd reach out to, you would already know. So I was like, well, I'm not going to really do that. So, <laughs> well, no, but listen, like anyone, any, any, like people telling other people, it'd be like, hey, you know, Emmy's free now. Like that just, exactly. Cements, that's just cements it. So, yeah. And there were also a couple of um, video producers that were also got, got the boot. I think CNET Cars has just decided to cut most of their video stuff. So, um, yeah. So I've got a couple of people. There are some pretty good videographers that are also, uh, looking for work so you can nice. get in touch with me if you would like to get in touch with them definitely noted noted sweet uh, that's it you can rate and re review the show on apple Podcasts. i didn't say itunes this time uh you can like and subscribe on youtube uh we're still posting videos there even though i think it's silly but i think ron likes to watch them so ron <laughs> i'm doing it for you um you can follow emmy she just said it at yeah emmy or yeah underscore emmy on twitter um and then the universe on twitter the real universe on instagram ross is no not like the one from friends i'm at <laughs> overlanding dad uh and you can read what we write on hooniverse utv driver atv writer everyday driver and u.s news and world report and that's it we've done a show so many places right all uh, places. almost all those places <laughs> ross and i'm in one <laughs> <laughs> fair point <laughs> you, uh, have, you have a byline there yes great you write for them exactly <laughs> yeah yep i mean i could 
I could add a couple more there then, but I'm not going to. So it's in my email signature. It's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Thanks, Amy. I'm so glad that you called up and um, that we got to chat a little bit again. It makes me happy. Yes, it's fun. Still, hour, right? Still. Yay. It is.